Ah, Star Wars, one of the most beloved series of all time. And most hated, mostly by its fans. Star Wars has often been hailed as a large contributing factor in many people's childhoods and upbringings. And you might think to yourself, man, that's Star Wars. What a, what a family-friendly, light-hearted romp through the galaxy, right? Right? Wrong. Star Wars, behind its family-friendly facade, contains a variety of adult themes including drug use. You may have heard of an illicit substance in the galaxy far, far away known as spice. I really only needed that can of spice for that one joke. I should put that back. But what is spice and why is it so important? Let's find out. So to begin, let's talk about the actual history of Spice in Star Wars. Now, I took my research very seriously. I went and I got my stack of EU books and turned on Star Wars The Clone Wars on autoplay. And then I got frustrated and I just opened Wikipedia. You would be amazed the information you can find on there. It's, it's very extensive. Anyway, allow me to illuminate on the history of Spice. Spice, as I stated before, is an illegal intoxicant in the Star Wars universe. Many people cite the Dune series by Frank Herbert for the inspiration for Spice. It is mined on various planets throughout the galaxy, most prevalently on Kessel through the use of enslaved Wookiees, which we saw in Solo, and several other planets throughout the system, such as Ryloth and Naboo. On Ryloth, the native spice was known as Rill, and it supposedly had a variety of both medicinal and scientific uses. You know, besides just getting high. Because that's the thing about spice. It's not necessarily meant to be used as an intoxicant, However, the majority of the time we hear about it in Star Wars, that is what it's being used for. That's what makes it so valuable. Interestingly enough, we don't hear about Spice that much in the main series of the movies. It's mentioned in A New Hope a few times, once where C-3PO is worried about being sent to the Spice Mines of Kessel, once when Han talks about dumping a shipment of Spice that he was carrying, and therefore incurring the wrath of one Jabba the Hutt, and again when Luke thinks that his father was a navigator on a Spice Freighter. You may have also noticed that I mentioned Han smuggling spice, which reminds me of the importance of spice runners. You know, spice running. That lucrative career that automatically makes a character edgier just by having it in their backstory. I'm talking, of course, about Poe Dameron, who we learn was a spice runner prior to joining the Resistance. And we get our first mention of this in The Rise of Skywalker, the last movie of the series. We also get a brief mention of it in Attack of the Clones, where apparently there's some unrest in the spice miners on the moons of Naboo, who were initially thought to be behind the uh, assassination attempt on Padme, but it was actually just Count Dooku. You know, that old scoundrel. The only other Star Wars movie we get much detail on spice is in Solo, where they actually visit the spice mines of Kessel and make the Kessel run in 12 parsecs. Ooh. If that's all the mentions that we get in the main movies, then what about the extended universe? Spice is actually mentioned quite a bit throughout the extended universe, and it seems to be a favorite throughout the various books and TV shows that encompass the Star Wars series. It appears or is mentioned in 13 episodes of the Clone Wars animated series and a variety of EU novels and many other formats. One of my favorite examples of this is in the Clone Wars when uh, Hondo captures Count Dooku and he, like, calls the Republic and is like, Hey, we have Count Dooku. We want a million credits worth of spice. And Palpatine is like, Yeah, sure, man, whatever. You want drugs? Fuck it, cool. Here's a, here's a million credits of spice. We know you got him, so yeah, you have his lightsaber. Obviously, he's alive 
and the government is just willing to trade illegal drugs for the capture of one man? That's so much money. And what kind of government is just like, yeah, totally. Drugs? Whatever. I, I don't care. We can, we can give drugs. Speaking of Hondo, they actually talk a little bit about Spice on the Smuggler's Run ride in Disney World, which, if you know anything about me, you know I love Disney. So, uh, yeah. It's pretty cool. Nice touch. But now I feel like we should get into what is Spice? Like, what is the actual, you know, product, aside from just being the narcotic? Like, what is it? I and I told you, I did my research. I did very thorough research for this. Initially, I was going to make an entire rap section where I, you know, wrapped all the different names, like Pokemon rap style. Uh, but I actually think it would be more fun if I just unprompted, with no rehearsal, attempted to read off every single name of the 64 different kinds of spice that there are. So I'm not going to do a cut here so that you know that this is live. So here we go. Andrus, Armudu, Aura, Avabush, Booster Blue, Carpo, Carsunum, Colafa, Corellian, regular and Sunburst, uh, Crashingborn, Cryoval, Cryovial, Deluge, Dokai, Doom Desire, Eldrots, Angspice, Fire, Grenanarian Narco, Garcornian, Giggle Dust, Glitterstim, Glitteril, Greed, Guilia, Gunjack, Dylan, Impact, G Ricknit, Carrick, Kasoti, Lisai, Lumni, Magnetar, Magarvian Cat, M Melanese Curry, Milliflower, Mummergy, Muon Gold, Neutron, Pixie, Novajack, Parflade, Federal, Polestone, Purple Lotus, Pyrepinal, Red Rage, Rilka, Rill, Rilcor, Sasana, Shenir, Spliff, Sweet Spice, Tempest, Thrusterhead, Tirafin, Whiff, Yaladai, Yarik, Zabrin, and Zinchari. I hope you're happy, because anyone else in the house right now thinks that I am a crazy person. Rap album coming soon. Now, in my research, I found that there seemed to be one kind of spice that was better defined than any other kind, you know, just in general. I mean, I talked a little bit about Rill, I talked a little bit about Sansana Dust, uh, but the biggest one, my friends, is Glitter Stim. Now, Glitter Stim is mined on Kessel, okay, and it apparently gives the user a brief heightened mental state and, and enhanced telepathic capabilities. And it is mined from the webs of spice spiders. Yes, you heard me. Spice spiders, also called energy spiders. Uh, they live in complete darkness in the mines of Kessel and are just horrifying to look at. But glitter stim itself is photoactive and therefore had to be mined in complete darkness. I'm guessing that's why we don't have more live action uses of glitter stim because it would just be a pitch black screen the entire time. In the Legends canon, Glitterstim was mined by the Republic, and it was used for medicinal and scientific purposes, but after the fall of the Republic, eventually it became a black market item only. But this is all part of the Legends canon, so it's not even part of the main canon any longer. The only mention of Glitterstim we ever get is in the book Twilight Company, so there's even less information on Spice than we had before. But what does that mean for us? Well, in my opinion, we gotta start putting out more EU content about Spice. Give me a full-length documentary in-universe. I will watch it all. I am so intrigued by this strange, illicit substance in Star Wars. Why does it function the way it does? Why does it do all of the things we talked about? Why are there so many different kinds? Kathleen Kennedy, if you're watching, and I know you are, this is my official pitch. Let's make a Spice series all about the production of Spice. It can be a Disney Plus original, I don't care. It doesn't have to be a full movie or anything like that. Just let me make a Spice series. I will be the host. I will talk for 
hours upon end. I will do whatever it takes to get a Spice series made. That's how committed I am. To this bit. <laughs> Let's make a Spice series, Lucasfilms. Let people know the truth. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the Twisted Mug Media Network channel. We'll be doing more stuff like this in the future, so make sure to keep an eye out. Also, check out our podcasts on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever podcasts are sold. On the network, of course, we have our flagship show, the Cinema Talk Podcast, which is our long-form movie review podcast. We have the CTP Movie Journal, where Matt and Ryan do their miscellaneous short-form movie podcast featuring their best of lists. We have Stop, Wait, What, which is our improv comedy advice show. We have Back in Style, which is our newcomer-friendly episodic review of Twin Peaks. Twisted Mug Mysteries, which is your one-stop shop for everything spooky and occult. Octo Island, our extended universe Star Wars podcast, so head there if you want more Star Wars content. And of course, our newest show, I Might Play That, which is our video game review podcast. Also, make sure to check us out on social media, Instagram and Twitter, at Twisted Mug Media. Thanks again for watching, and remember, the folks will be with you. Always.